My name's Adam Manaka and I'm the financial controller for High Tech Oils. With our national capacity, we can now service Australian companies nationwide. Of late, we have now expanded into the New Zealand market. Here at High Tech Oils, we receive premium base oils and premium additive packs. Together, with our highly trained staff, we manufacture over 500 premium quality products. High Tech Oils is Australian made and Australian owned. Hello and welcome to Sydney Motorsport Park, where the blue skies embrace us for the final round of this year's High Tech Oils Australian FX Superbike Championship. It only seems like yesterday that this year's championship started here back in March, and it's only fitting that we crown new champions in both the bikehaggle.com.au Superbikes and the Matrice Dampers Supersports and Amsport 600s at this iconic Sydney venue. We kick things off with the bikehaggle.com.au superbikes where Suzuki's Brendan McIntyre holds a narrow 12 point lead from the Yamaha of Simon Galloway, with Ducati's Ryan Yanko a further 7 points adrift in third. With double points on offer in this final round, it's anyone's championship for the taking. There's a great level of anticipation in the air for this year's final round, and Andrew Raw caught up with a number of key contenders to find out their thoughts coming into this weekend. Yeah, very nervous, um, excited. A um, bit frustrated at times because I'm not bike fit. Um, I haven't been riding a lot, so it's, it's, it's just a lot all at once. Um, but slowly but surely, you know, like for yesterday's events, you know, at the end of the day yesterday, I started to feel like, okay, I'm getting back there. Just obviously, I've put on weight, so my physical fitness isn't there, but my mental fitness is coming back. Well, the bikes you can hear in the background now are the Super Sport 600 warming up, so we chose to sit warm up out. One less heat cycle through the tyres, we got brand new tyres on, so we're hoping that uh, we can throw everything at the first race and get a win. Uh, well, I'm second in the championship. Uh, unfortunately, I had a crash in the first round. That put me beyond the eight ball, but I've slowly worked back, way back to second. Um, we'll just see what happens today, double points, so anything could happen. Yeah, always with the Formula Extreme Series, uh, it's been double points at the last round and um, can work for or against you. Uh, it's helped me out in the past when I've been behind and, um, and, it, and it keeps the series alive until the very last. So I think it's a good thing. If Brendan McIntyre is feeling nervous right now, he's definitely not showing as he edges closer to his maiden superbike title. We're getting ready for the first race on our Sunday program over eight laps, so let's have a look at how they grid up. So we had McMartin, Croker and Yanko on row one, Galloway, Swallow and McIntyre on row two. Griffith, Hasler and Beaton on row three. The fourth row is occupied by Yanni Shaw, Dominic de Leon and Michael Edwards with Hamish McMurray, Stephen Rossini and William Stewart rounding up the fifth and final row. So who will get the clear jump off the start line? Will it be McMartin off the front row? Or can Galloway or McIntyre rocket up to the front off row two? We're about to find out. Well, there you go. We've got uh, a couple of riders that are vacant on yes. that grid. I think you'll find that Max Croker was not there. Of course, he fell off yesterday. Unfortunately, the Suzuki rider on the Matt Maladden motorcycles machine was unable to take his place on the grid for this one. Down into bikebiz.com.au for the first time, and Ryan Yanko it is that has a fairly commanding lead over Simon Galloway in second place. Brendan McIntyre in third, trying to get cheekily around the outside there. In turn two was Tim Griffith. Yanni Shaw on that triple three Kawasaki, an older machine doing a great job up there in fifth placing. The almighty all conquering Irving Vincent of Bo Beaton in sixth place. Dean Hasler, Dominic De Leon, Stephen Rossini, Craig McMartin uncharacteristically back in tenth place. Hamish McMurray and Edwards rounds up the 12 runners at the moment. So through the tree stampers, and we can see the uh, distinguishing looking orange machine of uh, Yanni Shaw. But it is Ryan Yankum on 182 who leads him around the back of uh, Shock Treatment Hill for the first time. Galloway is in second place. McIntyre is third. Now they're the two that are fighting it out for the championship. At this stage, McIntyre is just 12 points in front of Simon Galloway as they head down through Races World and they head over towards Shark Leathers and Dunlop to start the run down the High Tech Oils Main Straight. <laughs> 
Yesterday they were only separated at the beginning of this weekend's final round of the uh, High Tech Oils Australian FX Superbike Championship uh, in the bikehaggle.com.au Superbike category by 12 points. Yesterday they each scored 106 points, so it's condition normal. It's almost like, forget about yesterday, yeah, it's right. really on in yep. earnest today. Yanni Shaw there just ahead of Dean Hasler. Or is that Tim Griffith? Tim Griffith. Tim Griffith. Is, yep. So he's moved himself now up into fourth placing on board Machine Triple Three, the Select Fresh Providers, Andrews Meets Industries Kawasaki ZX10R. It has a fair bit of age about it, that bike. As we take a look at a replay of the start, you can see how McMartin was left high and dry as his Ducati failed to fire up when they got underway. This allowed Yanko to clear away into turn one with a clear advantage as Galloway jumps to second, followed by McIntyre who settled down in third place. Galloway just getting away a little bit from McIntyre. As he said, Lance just uh, balked himself a little bit and uh, McIntyre's now got to really put the uh, head down and tail up and try and close this gap down as they head up through Matrice uh, Dampers and then around the back of Shock Treatment Hill. He's closed, McIntyre's closing in. The next one through is Yanni Shaw. Then Craig McMartin starting from the rear of the grid is now up into fifth position. Yeah, he's putting a lot of pressure onto the back of Yanni Shaw on board that Ducati is, of course, Craig McMartin, the Panigale V4. He gets up the inside of Yanni Shaw and says, move out of the way, you young whippersnapper. I may have a few more years on you, but I've got the experience and I love turn nine. <laughs> certainly does, down through races.world. Uh, there is McMartin now in front of Yanni Shaw. Yanko is still the race leader by two seconds. Galloway is there in second and McIntyre is third. Ryan Yanko, the Forsyth contractor's better pork Kabuto. Five gloves Ducati, 12.99, doing a great job out in front at the moment. He now has a two-second lead over this battle for second between Simon Galloway and Brendan McIntyre. A little further back, Yanni Shaw, Craig McMartin, Tim Griffith, Hasler, Beaton, De Leon, Rossini, Edwards and McMurray round up your 12 runners. And just as we say that, look at McIntyre shooting past Galloway up into second place, which will no doubt help his point situation as the battle for the championship rages on. So as they continue their battle for second, here's a replay of the bold move by McMartin on Yanni Shaw at races.world one lap ago. And here's another look on how McIntyre slipped past Galloway for second at bikebiz.com.au turn two. It was Galloway who went wide on the exit of turn one, allowing the Suzuki rider to roar past him. Here comes McMartin on Galloway, not quite down there through turn one, it's but now sweeps around the outside, Lance, has he got the drive, he's trying to get on the inside, I think, but Galloway, nicely done by Simon, covers this oh. one, but McMartin around the outside. Well, look at the brakes oh. on that Ducati, you just can't do that round the outside. Craig McMartin up into third place with a very bold manoeuvre around the outside of the Chris Watson motorcycles. Yamaha R1 of Simon Galloway now has his sights set on the Western Motorcycles Sydney Rick Pop Joy Racing 7 Friday Suzuki GSXR of series leader Brendan McIntyre. He gets up the inside of him in turn five Dunlop. No, he doesn't. McIntyre maintains control and race pace and position. He's still in second. Third is uh, McMartin and fourth Galloway shaking his, his head saying, wow, what a manoeuvre from McMartin down in bikebiz.com.au. All of Craig McMartin's years of experience and came to the fore in that passing manoeuvre, Lance. He did it safely, he did it perfectly, and as I say, his years of experience will pull that off for him. Lesser riders would have ended up in the track down sunny side up. Yes, absolutely. He uh, dared to tread where only angels fear to dare yeah, on the yeah, outside with true. all the rubble yep. in a hardest breaking uh, corner or one of the hardest breaking corners in Australian motorcycle sport. The Yamaha R1 of the Chris Watts Watson motorcycles mounted Simon Galloway. He can see the championship points slipping away from him here, although McMartin's going to do him a favour if he can get in front of McIntyre as they head down the end of uh, um, the main straight through turn one for the final lap. Yep. Here comes that Ducati. Yep. Good Will under brakes. <laughs> Not this time. I don't think so. No. Gets good drive out of bikebiz.com.au initially, but McIntyre 
has extended that gap by another half a bike length. That's all he needs to do. It's very important for his championship points and aspiration to finish ahead of McMartin. He doesn't want McMartin to finish ahead of him because Galloway would then benefit from that in terms of a lesser distance uh, in, in difference in the points. Up to Matrice and uh, McMartin stalking McIntyre as they come around the back of Shock Treatment Hill down towards racesworld.com, sorry, races.world down around the back of uh, Shock Treatment Hill. McMartin tries an outside line. McIntyre covers his line, keeps it nice and tight on the run through races.world down the short straight lance. Simon running out, Simon Galloway running out of uh, race distance and uh, Craig McMartin also uh, looking good there in fourth position third uh, position. But it's not taking anything away from Ryan Yanko on the Force 8 contractors. Better pork Kabuto, five um, gloves, Ducati 12.99. He's going to take another victory here this weekend as part and parcel of round four of the High Tech Oils Australian FX Superbike Championship. Brendan McIntyre does well to finish in second on board the Western Motorcycle Sydney 7 Friday. Rick Popjoy Racing Suzuki GSX R1000 and with the Ducati of uh, Craig McMartin faltering at the last hurdle, that has allowed Simon Galloway on on the Chris Watson Motorcycles Yamaha R1 to finish in third placing. So championship leader ahead of championship second in second and third placing respectively. Well, here we go with the official race results. Ryan Yanko on that 12.99 Ducati ahead of Brendan McIntyre Suzuki GSXR 1000 and Simon Galloway on the Yamaha R1, followed home by an ailing Ducati V4 of Craig McMartin with Yanni Shaw on the older Kawasaki ZX-10R finishing in P5. They were followed home by Dean Hasler, Tim Griffith, Bo Beaton, Dominic De Leon, and Hamish McMurray rounding up your top 10. Yeah, what a race. So we got the start, got the whole shot, and I could hear the guys behind me. Um, just put my head down, got the job done, and after yesterday's dramas that we had, it's a good, good bonus to the weekend to come out on top. We still have plenty more racing to come here at Sydney Motorsport Park as we continue the action of the bikehackle.com.au superbikes on the other side of this break. Welcome back to Sydney Motorsport Park for our final round coverage of the High Tech Oils Australian FX Superbike Championship. One of the biggest advancements in motorcycle development in recent years is the introduction of electronically adjustable suspension. This development has created a new set of challenges for suspension experts such as Racetech's Terry Hay. He explains why to Andrew Raw. Well currently we're seeing a lot of electronics creep into the suspension market, uh, particularly Ducati, um, they were the first to bring out electronic adjust suspension uh, along with BMW. That creates a, a greater level of convenience for the average bike rider, but um, it's not sophisticated enough to actually employ for racing at this point. You'll probably see in MotoGP, World Superbikes, that all of the electronics that have crept in have, have sort of uh, made their way through ECU um, fuel injection. Uh, traction control, but we're still using manual suspension in those uh, in those arenas. So, with uh, the current level of electronic adjust suspension, it really needs to become a lot more sophisticated in order to make it ready for the racetrack and ultimate performance. Before we get underway with the final race of the season in the bikehaggle.com.au superbikes, here are the highlights of the second Sunday race. Ryan Yanko had another of his lightning starts as he bolted into the lead ahead of McIntyre, Shaw and Galloway, who was a little slow off the start line this time round. But making a real porker of a start was Craig McMartin, who worked his way up into the race lead on the opening lap, having started from fourth on the grid. Another rider making significant progress up the field was the Irving Vincent V-twin of Bo Beaton. He was hounding the rear wheels of Yanni Shaw and Simon Galloway during the first few laps of the race and was in a prime position to pounce should they start to falter. When they eventually broke away from the Irving Vincent, Shaw and Galloway applied plenty of pressure to McIntyre as they tried to push the Suzuki rider into making a mistake and causing a dint into his slim championship lead. All of that was to no avail in the end as McIntyre held his nerve. Whilst all that was going on, McMartin would clear away with an unassailable lead and take out the second race ahead of McIntyre by a comfortable four seconds. 
His championship chances were aided as Shaw pipped Galloway for third place right on the line. So, after four rounds of competition, we are down to the final race of the year, where Craig McMartin will lead the field off pole position, and it's great to see the 2009 champion back in the series after a long layoff. Here we go with the starting order. Craig McMartin, Brendan McIntyre and Yanni Shaw. Row two, Simon Galloway, Dean Hasler and Team Griffith. Row three sees Bo Beaton, Michael Edwards and Dominic DeLuyan with Hamish McMurray, Ryan Yanko and Stephen Rossini rounding up our 12 starters in this final eight lap encounter for the year. Very interesting indeed, Lance. What a way for the uh, bikehaggle.com.au Superbike Championship to uh, finish for the year. Down to the wire. Down to the wire indeed. Eight laps away from crowning the 2018 High Tech Oils Australian FX Superbike Champion in the bikehaggle.com.au category. And Brendan McIntyre has made Galloway. a flying start for Galloway round the outside. He wants to lead them home. He wants to finish as a winner. And uh, Brendan McIntyre now under challenge from, I think it's up the inside, Yanni Shaw, is it? And. Uh... Oh, somebody's gone too wide, too deep. Had to straighten it up. It's Bo Beaton himself. up in the second spot. Yeah, Bo Beaton it is that's taken up the challenge. McIntyre relegated back to fifth in all amongst that moment. Now he's got some work to do, Lance. He certainly does. Let's see what he can do. Galloway, Beaton, Shaw, Hasler, McIntyre, Yanko, DeLeon, Edwards, Griffith, McMurray and Craig McMartin it must have been that went off high, wide and handsome there, outbreaking himself. Bo Beaton's taken the lead from Galloway, Yanni Shaw, then Hasler, then McIntyre. Oh, this is no good. <laughs> oh, can you imagine Ken and Barry Horner down pit side? They'll be beside themselves if the Irving Vincent takes out the final race of the year. Look at that Valentino Rossi style. Well, I guess it's every MotoGP yeah, rider yeah. style now. The right leg out on Bo Beaton. He's got the bit between the teeth. The Horner brothers have got this percolating at perfect uh, performance at the moment for Bo Beaton. Look at him. Pushing hard, isn't he? Galloway. He certainly is. Brendan McIntyre's gone back another spot. Yeah, he's Yanko back got into past sixth. him. Yanko got past him. Yanni yep. Shaw up into third. It still could be enough for him to take out the championship. As I said, about 30 points separating them. He doesn't need to win the race. He doesn't even need to finish in front of, uh, of uh, our race leader, Simon Galloway. Yep. Not uh, what's happened there to Bo Beaton. Oh, rider off. Is that McIntyre? My goodness me, there's two, two riders two that have there. been taken out there by the looks of it. This will be a red flag, no doubt, as it looks like it was Tim Griffith aboard his Kawasaki. And I think the Yamaha of Michael Edwards involved in that crash. Well, riders are slowing down now, aware that we've had an incident. So they'll head back to the pits and ready themselves for a full race restart. My goodness gracious me, that was a lucky one for both riders. The good news is, by the looks of it, that they're both up and about, so that is great to see. So let's have a look at what exactly happened at Turn 1 as the field went through line astern. You can see that the rear wheel of Edwards' Yamaha had suddenly locked up and threw him off his mount and into the path of Griffith, who was just minding his own business, unfortunately. As we said, both riders are up and about, but it has brought their weekend to an unfortunate end. The bikehaggle.com.au Superbike final race of the season. Who will it be that gets a whole shot? Oh, boy, oh, boy. It looked like Craig McMartin there. Stalled. Stalled it at yep. the start line, rather uncharacteristically from Mr. Ducati himself. Mm. So Brendan McIntyre it was that got the whole shot, but not for long. Here's Simon Galloway, and uh, I think you'll find that's Yanni Shaw sure. back yep. in third place now. McIntyre's gone Ryan. back three, four places that time through bike, uh, bikebiz.com.au. Ryan Yanko, I think it is, that's up into second place at this stage. Up over bikehaggle.com.au for the run down into Dunlop. Now, where does this put the championship at the moment, Lance? We've still got... Uh, Seven and a half laps to go. Yeah, Here comes Craig McMartin at the tail end of the field. This will be interesting to see yeah. how determined McMartin is to make up for, for his mistake early on in this race. Yes. Now, is Brendan just sitting back there? 
picking up points. He would be probably be going through his mind now of how many points there is up for grabs. Let's see if he uh, moves up a couple of spots. I'm sure he will. He's right on the back of Yanni Shaw. But it is Simon Galloway, Ryan Yanko, Yanni Shaw, Bo Beaton, Brendan McIntyre, McIntyre, and then Dominic Leon. Look at Yanko right up onto the rear of uh, Simon Galloway. And here comes Bo Beaton. He was leading early on in the first asking of this race on that almighty, all-conquering Irvin Vincent. No Galloway's lead. And behind him is uh, Ryan Yanko. Then it is Yanni Shaw. Then it is Brenda McIntyre. Both of those riders have been able to outpower Bo Beaton down the high-tech oil straight, although Beaton goes around the outside again of uh, number two, Brendan uh, McIntyre on the run into uh, bikebiz.com.au. So it's Galloway, Yanko, Shaw, Beaton, McIntyre. Out of turn four they come now for the run up to turn five. Dunlop is the area it's known as. Bo Beaton up onto the rear of Yanni Shaw. Likewise, look at Ryan Yanko taking up the challenge to Simon Galloway. Up into Matrice Damp as they go. The left-hander that leads for the long, swooping left-hand run around Shock Treatment Hill. Let's have a look back at the race start from the BMW of Dean Hasler, who usually launches off the start line quite quickly. In this instance, he got swamped by Dominic de Leon and a few others as they negotiated Turn 1 at the end of the High Tech Oil's main straight. But getting another blinding start was Bo Beaton who made a number of places up by going around the outside of his rivals at turns one and again in turn two, including Brendan McIntyre, who is taking a cautious approach in his final race of the year. Look at the body language from Craig McMartin. He means business in no uncertain terms. Yanni Shaw, in the meantime, could do a big favour to Brendan McIntyre if he uh, overtakes... Um, Simon Galloway on the Chris Watson motorcycles Yamaha R1. McIntyre's got right. a good chance of getting past Yanni Shaw as well. Yeah, right behind him, the Western Motorcycle Sydney 7 Friday, Rick Popjoy Racing Suzuki GSXR of champion elect Brendan McIntyre back there in fourth place. He won't be that worried about not finishing on the podium as long as he doesn't finish any further back than what he is yeah. now. He should take a comfortable championship victory. Galloway on screen at the moment out of Shark Leathers. Tucked in behind him is Yanni Shaw, then Brendan McIntyre. They're battling it out for uh, third place on the podium. Yanko has uh, been and gone. Craig McMartin has now cut that lead down to 1.5 seconds with just uh, two laps to go. Here comes McIntyre up the inside of Shaw. In the meantime, Shaw is trying to get up the inside of Galloway. He can't do it. Neither of them can. Here comes Yanni Shaw. Gets a better drive out of turn one. Under breaks down into bikebiz.com.au. Simon Galloway now relegated back to fourth place. Yanko, McMartin, Galloway in fourth, Shaw in third, McIntyre in fifth. The championship on the line between fourth and fifth placing. Sorry, yes, between fourth, fourth and fifth, and fifth placing. Yeah. Here comes uh, Craig McMartin now getting onto the very close to the back of uh, Ryan Yanko's machine as they will get the uh, chequered flag. This, uh, not the chequered flag, sorry, the, the last, last lap to board, go board this yes. time around as they come down through Matrice. It is all going a little wide as Yanko. I think uh, Yanko and Monic Martin will certainly, uh, he will certainly hear him there, Lance. He certainly will. He'll know that he's right up onto the rear exhaust of uh, Ryan Yanko. Out of turn nine for the rundownraces.com for the last or second last time. Ryan Yanko, all amounts of pressure being applied to him by Craig McMartin, who remember. Uh, seven laps ago when they go over the strike line, he started the race stalling the bike. He did. <laughs> Left at the start line. High Tech Oil's main straight now. He's getting close to the slipstream. Not Oh, yes, he is. He's in the slipstream now. He switches to the inside. Can he go there into he the goes. race lead? Round the outside goes Yanko. McMartin on the inside. Yanko switches to the inside. But McMartin's got the break. He'll hold the line down through... Uh, Bikebiz.com.au. Ducati so, against Ducati. Yeah. yeah. That 
uh, oh, but they both move at both of them. McMartin gets a little bit out of shape, so too did Ryan Yanko trying to chase him down. Not a bad effort for Craig McMartin. Amazing it. Yanko not giving up that though as they come down into Dunlop. Heading up towards McLeese Dampers. This is the last lap. Oh, Yanko. Gee, they push up it. over the rise down into the left hand of Ryan Yanko. He doesn't want to give this race victory up. A cheeky look over the right <laughs> shoulder there from Craig McMartin saying, Catch me if you can. I've come from dead last after stalling at the start line. Now I'm leading the race with only four corners to go through turn nine. Race Tech out of there on races.com down the main straight look at the body language the balance of the body being required by craig mcmartin through turn 10 into 11 and 12 it's the 27 the ducati Penegale of uh, craig mcmartin it's going to be a ducati horsepower race down the high-tech oils main straight for the final time of the season craig mcmartin from dead last to first as the chequered flag waves ryan rianko in second yanni shaw another very creditable third placing brendan mcintyre finishes ahead of simon, simon galloway, galloway. Yep. therefore securing the 2018 bikehaggle.com.au superbike championship as part of the high-tech Oils Australian FX Superbike Championship. Well, Great way to finish the premier category. It certainly was. Bikehagel.com.au Superbike. Craig McMartin, congratulations to him. Stalled it and would have spotted them probably half the length of the straight. The, the, uh, the start finish line here is about halfway down the, uh, the uh, high tech oil straight. Yeah, 1,000 metres long is the straight about 500 metres of it, taken up by uh, where the start line, yep. finish line area is. Craig McMartin coming back through turn four, past one of our hard-working officials there, Kenny, who's been doing a great job, not only throughout this race meeting, but throughout the entire season. Seems to be his favourite spot, Lance, to see there at every meeting. Yes, we do. It's, his, it's got his name on it, that uh, marshalling point. That area of the track has been fossilised by Kenny. <laughs> I think we're going to see a nice little bit of a, a burnout here by uh, Brendan McIntyre. No, and Dominic, Dominic De Leon. De Leon in the At One Pro race suits. <laughs> Kawasaki ZX10R. So Craig McMartin takes out the final race win of the year ahead of Ryan Yanko, making it a Ducati 1-2. Yanni Shaw caps off an impressive weekend with third place aboard his Kawasaki, whilst the fourth place finish is enough for Brendan McIntyre to wrap up the bikehaggle.com.au Superbike Championship for 2018. Well, congratulations, High Tech Oils Australian FX Superbike Champion for 2018. Will you be back to defend your title? Uh, we'll see what our plans are for next year. This, um, this year knocked us around a fair bit um, with budget, so we'll, we'll see what we can pull together for next year and where we land. Final thoughts as 2018 champion? Yeah, look, it would take a bit to sink in, but that, that trophy, um, has meant a lot for for many many years, and um, it's been a coveted thing. And, and I always, from a young bloke, had my eye on it. And to finally get it, yeah, it's pretty special. We now move on to the final stars of tomorrow's standalone race for the 2018 season, which is open to all C and D grade riders in the High Tech Oils Australian FX Superbike Championship. We've had a number of different winners in this unique race format throughout the season and the level of talent that we have seen emerge has been impressive. You can see on the race grid that we have seven rows of riders ready to take to the start and any one of them has equal opportunity to take the race win as we get ready for the race start. Race two of the weekend and their only uh, standalone encounter uh, on the Sunday program, down the end of the High Tech Oils Main Straight through turn number one, and I think you'll find it's Tim Griffith that leads them down into bikebiz.com.au for the first time. Yes, doing a good job out there in front. McMurray and Pellegrin following him through in second and third. Rossini is through there in fourth, Lynch is fifth, and Dunlop is sixth. But they head up out of bikebiz.com.au and over to uh, bikehaggle.com.au and it is Griffith leading just from Hamish McMurray and Pellegrin in third. Through turns four and five, Dunlop, of course, uh, as it's known, out of there, the rise up over the top, the back of uh, Shock Treatment Hill into Matrice Dampers. Tim Griffith doing a good job to still continue to lead Hamish McMurray. 
so out of Matrice and around the back of that shock treatment hill. The lead still being held by McMurray. He is 0.3 of a second in front of Hamish McMurray. As you can see, there's nothing in it between the top three as they head down into races.world. The sharp right-hander at turn nine head down the races.world uh, uh, short back straight and head into Shark Leathers, and uh, that takes them on to the run down the main high-tech straight, high-tech oil straight. This uh, front three runners uh, have broken away a little bit from Stephen Rossini in fourth place, followed by Lynch, Dunlop, Appleby, Graham, Anderson and Kilmer rounding up your top ten. But the battles are not just restricted to the front of the pack, are they, Dave? You can see as the bikes stream down the 1,000 metre, one kilometre long high-tech oil's main straight. So let's go back to the race start and jump on board with Kawasaki's Adrian Pellegrin. He got away to a fairly ordinary start at first, but once he started to build momentum, he quickly worked his way up to third as Tim Griffith quickly roars into the race lead aboard his similarly mounted Kawasaki. They're on lap four of six, so we're at two-thirds race distance, so there's still plenty of time for Pellegrin to uh, keep applying the pressure on Tim Griffith in front of him. Yes, down to bikebiz.com.au. Oh, going wide right. was Griffin Lance, mm. yes. Almost left the door open, or jar, but uh, Pellegrin just couldn't uh, quite make uh, uh, a, a good fist of that. And, uh, just has to settle back there into uh, second spot as they come over bikehagel.com.au and down into Dunlop. It is still Griffith leading for Pellegrin and uh, McMurray. And I did notice Lance that last lap coming out of uh, Shark Leathers before they took the run down the High Tech Earls Main Straight. Uh, McMurray's bike wiggling quite noticeably as he uh, really tried to get the power on a little bit too early and uh, the back end of the bike stepped out as he uh, started to run down the high tech oil straight. This battle for 6th, 7th and 8th continues between Appleby, Dunlop, Anderson and Graham is not that far behind them either but it's all about Tim Griffith out in front at the moment. This is the stars of tomorrow, C and D grade uh, class riders. An opportunity for them to showcase their words, not only to the trackside uh, crowd here, but also to the world and our live stream coverage. Let's look back on the replay at how loose some of these bikes can get as they exit the final turn. Especially Hamish McMurray aboard his Kawasaki, the tail of his bike getting exceptionally loose as they plant the power down coming onto the high-tech oil's main straight. Into shark leathers for the final time and the run to the chequered flag down the high-tech oils main straight. It is all Tim Griffith doing a great job to pilot the BC Performance Tag, Avionics, Coolman Logistics, Kawasaki ZX-10R. Only marginally it will end up being ahead of the 67 of Adrian Pellegrin, also a ZX-10R. A great effort from these two. They certainly took the race right down to the wire, but it's, oh, it it's looks Pellegrin. like Pellegrin got it right on the wire. He managed to be able to outdraft him. Griffith down to the checkered flag. Hamish McMurray will take third. Wow, what a turn up for the cars. Yes. He certainly left his best till last. He certainly did, didn't he? Coming out of Shark Leathers for the last time, he got really uh, top drive out of there and that set him up for a nice uh, draft behind our uh, then race leader, Tim Griffin. And uh, Tim, unfortunately, has to be settled for, uh, settled for second spot. But uh, a great win there to uh, Andrew Pellegrin. Timmy Griffin second and Hamish McMurray third. Here are the official results. Adrian Pellegrin on his Kawasaki ZX-10R ahead of Tim Griffith and Hamish McMurray making it a trio of Kawasaki ZX-10Rs finishing ahead of Stephen Rossini's Yamaha R1. Chris Lynch on his Kawasaki ahead of Lee Appleby in P6. The first of the Suzuki's Jack Dunlop in P7. Eighth went to the Honda of Matt Anderson, followed home by another Yamaha of Peter Graham and Trent Kilmer rounding up the top ten on his Kawasaki. One very happy chappy here. We all thought that race was done and dusted. Where did that come from? Uh, I've got absolutely no idea. I just saw uh, just a little red, little green engine that could and just chugged and chugged and um, finally pipped him on the line right at the very end. I just stalked his lines, done whatever I could just to be nice and simple and smooth and yeah, personal best lap time. First time I've actually ridden a 1000 um, at a race meet, so um, absolutely exciting. With the Superbike title all wrapped up, we turn our attention on the other side of this break to the Matrice Dampers Super Sports and Am Sports 600s, where Callum Barker is aiming for championship glory.
Thanks for joining us here at Sydney Motorsport Park as we welcome you back to our final round coverage of the High Tech Oils Australian FX Superbike Championship. We now turn our attention to the Matrice Stampers Supersport and Amsport 600s, where Callum Barker holds a 97 point lead over Stephanie Redmond and a 110 point lead over Ryan Sullen. The Suzuki rider needs to just finish all three races on the Sunday program to wrap up the title. So let's have a look at the grid for race one. Aidan Hayes sits on pole position ahead of Stephanie Redman and Callum Barker. Whilst on row two, we welcome back Ryan Masry, who sits alongside Brody Maloof and Ryan Sellen. The Amsport 600s form up from row four, with Jack Passfield sitting on pole alongside Andrew Edzer and Carl Kitson. Noel Mahone heads up row five alongside Brian Bolster and Robbie Tesserero. Whilst on row six, we have Matthew Franco, Mary Molina and Brooke Ernst. They uh, line up in the hands of the starter. As soon as the starter lowers his red flag and walks off the grid, they are then in the hands of the starter. Red lights are displayed, and as soon as the red lights go out, racing is underway. So it's Hayes, Redman. Good start there from Callum Barker over on the inside, closest to the fence. Stephanie Redman got balked a little bit there by our pole sitter Hayes as they swoop across the nose of each other in turn one for the run down to the um, uh, turn two, the bikebiz.com.au, hard, tight, intense braking, somebody going extremely wide round the outside, leaning on each other, but Aidan Hayes it is, it's made the best of the start as he heads out of turn two through bikehaggle.com.au and over the top of the downhill run into Dunlop. Yes, it's uh, Hayes leading, Passfield has already moved himself up into his second spot. Callum Barker is back in third. Stephanie Redman is fourth. And Brian Maloof is the next one through on machine number 28 in fifth place. They head up towards the three stampers. Then uh, down the left-hander. Head around the back of Shock Treatment Hill. But it's Hayes leading from Passfield and Barker. Jack Passfield coming off row four effectively as our pole sitter in the Amsport 600s. And he's already up into second place. Look at him trying to get up the inside there of Hayes as he goes down into race tech for the first time. He can't do it. He takes a wider entry, a wider exit, closer to the outside of the black stuff that they need to be racing on as they head down races.world back straight and into shark leathers. The double apex or triple apex, whichever uh, side of the coin you look at it from, but it's certainly a difficult corner to get correct because you need to get that power down effectively and early for the run down the high-tech oils main straight. Yes, and I'm looking at uh, Stephanie Redman and Ryan Sellen and Callum Barker. They have a great battle there for third place as uh, Hayes continues to lead Passfield down the high-tech oils main straight and through turn uh, one and head back over towards bikebiz.com.au now this is where you set yourself well. look at Passville looking for an inside pass trying to squeeze oh, how Dunlow. cheeky was <laughs> that well done and also uh, Lancey managed to uh, hold a tight line too normally when a rider does uh, does that inside pass it forces himself wide and the uh, the rider that he's just passed managed to repass him but congratulations Jack Passville and speaking of Jack, we go on board with him as we look back at the race start where Aidan Hayes managed to jump ahead of Barker and Redmond in the opening stages of this race. Uh, Passfield, meanwhile, just rocketed away from the, his Amsport 600 opposition to take up fourth place by turn one before passing Redmond for third at bikebiz.com.au turn two. Oh, who was that trying to get up in? Ryan Masri. Now it looks like uh, Redman coming back up the inside. Oh, look at that. She gives him a little bit of a head shake there, saying, <laughs> use your head, young fella. <laughs> I think he just went in a little bit too deep and a little bit exuberant. Of course, remembering that's a slightly older model bike. Yep. Good on, good on Stephanie. Takes no prisoners, does she? No. I, th I don't know whether that was for Ryan Sellon or Ryan Masri, <laughs> was it? I... Might have been for both of them. Uh, anyway, the name is Ryan. There's yeah, no doubt about right. that. And Stephanie's not happy about no, it. No, she was not. That was a brave move by Sullen to force his way past Redmond at races.world. Well, let's have a look at it again on the replay. Sullen actually had the line and momentum to pass Redmond, but carried a little bit too much speed into the corner. And this meant that Redmond had to back out slightly as she uh, tipped it in and, in turn, walked Ryan Masri in the process. No wonder she's not a happy lady about it at all. Down the high 
right kick, all main straight, nothing in it in speed. This time Passfield gets a toe down the straight. Can he go on with it down through the high tech oils? Turn one, he can. He gets the inside line, so he goes back into the race lead as they go down the uh, through the high tech oils. Oh, on the inside is Hayes. Has he got enough of a gap there to get through? He got the drive on the inside, but wasn't able to maintain that momentum no. down into the braking area of bikebiz.com.au. Pass. Look how close they are. Passfield defended his line very, very well there through uh, bikebiz.com.au. Now down the, uh, the hill at uh, bikehaggle.com.au. It's Jack Passfield who's gone back into the race lead from uh, Aidan Hayes, then Callum Barker, Stephanie Redman, Ryan Sellen. But uh, Passfield, now he's out in front, Lance, starting to stretch it out just a little bit. Let's see if Hayes can come back at him as they come down through Matrice Dampers, come down through the left hand around the back of Shop Crimpton Hill and down into races.world. I think we've seen this before, Dave. Yes, Yesterday so in all three I races. So. Yes, I think so, Lance. It's just as entertaining then as it is now. It certainly was as they negotiate the shock treatment hill down into races dot world. The start of that back straight. Callum Barker still maintaining that slender lead over Stephanie Redmond for the final podium position. And right behind her, oh. Ryan Sellen getting out of the saddle, getting onto the gas a little bit early. Down races dot world and into shark leathers they come. Yes, Callum Barker now into Shark Leathers, heading down towards the High Tech Oils Main Straight. They will get the last lap board this time through. Very, very interesting to see whether uh, uh, Ryan Sellers just holding a little bit back, perhaps, uh, over Redmond and Barker. But as they head down the High Tech Oils Main Straight, there's not much in it speed, is there, Lance? It's all a drafting proposition now. As Passfield now on the inside as uh, Hayes as he got the line through bikebiz.com.au. Oh, he had the... Oh! oh! Passfield <coughs> almost high-sided himself off the bike then. Well, he tried to do the classic switch back there, but he Aiden did. Hayes covered his line very well, just maintained his racing line. And unfortunately for Passfield, he had to bang on the front brake a little bit harder than he wanted to, sat himself upright. That may be all she mm. sang from here on in. Here's another look at it from Passfield's perspective as Hayes managed to push his way past at Bike Biz Turn 2, and that kind of upset Passfield's rhythm slightly, as Hayes quickly opened up a small gap to consolidate his lead. Through uh, races.world, now they go down the short straight. Passfield on the inside, can't get through. Hayes defending his line very, very well as they come around the last uh, right-hander and into Shark Leathers. Lance Hayes, has he got enough? Well, Jack Passfield is trying very hard indeed. It's all going to be a horsepower, a drag race down the high-tech oils main straight. Oh, out of the Hayes. Saddle, Hayes! He's done it. He tried too hard. The pressure from Passfield has paid off, and Passfield's going to take it out by a narrow margin ahead of Aiden Hayes. Well done to him. He just consistently put that pressure on. Third place is not over and done with yet. Here comes Stephanie Redmond. She drafts Callum Barker. Who is it? She's Redmond it. gets it. She gets another podium ahead of Callum. Barker. Oh, bad luck for Barker. Good luck for Redmond and Ryan Sellen. All he can do is sit back behind them and shake his head. Ryan Masri, a great effort in sixth. That was great finishes for first and second and great finishes for uh, uh, third and fourth as well as Passfield takes the win out. Well, let's have a look at the official results there. I'm going to have to have a Panadol and take some <laughs> Ventolin, I think. Jack Passfield ahead of Aidan Hayes by a narrow margin of 0.2 seconds. Stephanie Redman only 0.1 of 0.3 seconds ahead of Callum Barker for third and fourth, respectively. Yeah, it was, it was an awesome race out there. Really good battle with Jack and um, just made a mistake at the end there and, uh, and he got me back, but it was well worth the battle. It was awesome. The, uh, the championship is wide open in this uh, final day of racing. Yeah, no, it's really good. I mean, we're just out there having fun no matter what we are in the championship. You know, it's just good to be out there. This is the second encounter of the day for the Matrice Dampers Super Sport and Am Sport 600, proudly brought to you by Matrice Dampers. So here's a grid for race two. The front row consists of Aidan Hayes, Stephanie Redman, and Callum Barker. Whilst on row two, we have the two Ryans in Selen and Masri, as well as Brodie Maloof. With the third row left vacant, Jack Passfield leads the Amsport 600 field off row four, with Robbie Tesserero and Andrew Edzer alongside him. Row five sees Matthew Franco, Noel Mahone and Carl Kitson together, and row six is occupied by Brian Bolster, Brooke Ernst and Brad Small. So they're set to go. This is the Matrice Stampers 
Super Sport and Am Sport 600s. Look for Passfield. There's uh, Hayes getting away to a good start. Callum Barker up into yep. second. Stephanie Redmond third. But it is Aiden Hayes that leaves the field. Down into turn one. And down into bikebiz.com.au. Barker up into second now. Trying to find a way down the inside of Hayes. It, uh, Redmond is third. Passfield is fourth. Just trying to get up past Stephanie Redmond. Reminding the jury of critics on the sideline that Hayden and, uh, uh, sorry, Hayes and Barker came together yesterday. Barker coming off the worst for wears in race one. Races two and three, he borrowed Mitch Coon's spare Kawasaki, went out there to continue to get points up on the board for the championship. They repaired the Suzuki overnight and he's back out there doing a great job in second place. You can see Steph Redman in third, fourth place. Jack Passfield has already come up from his uh, fourth row start and is in fourth place at the moment with Ryan Sellen not that far behind him. Yes, and we've got Brady Maloof, Ryan Masri, Robbie Tessarero, Aidan Edza, and uh, Franco and uh, Mahone and uh, Kitson. As they come down into uh, races.world, the short back straight. It is Hayes leading from Barker, Passfield and Redmond. Yeah, Redmond doing a great job at the moment, right up onto the rear cowling of Callum Barker's Suzuki. So the addictive to track Yamaha R6 performing well at this early stage. Right into the slipstream of Callum Barker is Stephanie Redman. As they negotiate the high-tech oils main straight, she pulls to the inside, but look out right behind them. Here comes Jack Passfield. He cheekily tried to take two in one go there, but got his nose chopped off by Callum Barker, defending the line and trying to chase Stephanie Redman, who's now up into second place. Let's look back at the start and we jump on board again with Jack Passfield who started off the fourth row and quickly roared up into fourth place by the time they reached turn one. But once again it was Aidan Hayes who got the whole shot off the line and cleared away into the lead ahead of Barker and Redman as they continued their championship battle. Stephanie Redman on screen now at the moment and machine number 49 around the outside is Passfield. I don't know whether that was the uh, brightest move that he's made this weekend, Lance. I think he just went in a little bit he too often. Yes. He had to use yep. up more of the black stuff than he would, would normally have done. Stephanie Redmond has a cheeky look over her left shoulder there to see how close Passfield is. He, she knows that he's looming up larger than life and maximises the slipstream. Gets her in turn one. She's going to try and outdrive him down into turn two. Take the inside line for the braking markers down into bikebiz.com.au. Unable to do that, discretion being the better part of Valor, backs off. Line astern follows him out of two into three. Bikehaggle.com.au over the hill and down into Dunlop. Well, it's rather amazing to think that Passfield is so competitive on board the older spec 600 machine. So let's take a look once again at that pass. And it all started coming out of Shark Leathers, the final turn. He immediately slotted into Redmond's slipstream and carried that good pace to roar past her along the high-tech oils main straight. Oh, 3.05, Andrew Edza. Edza. Unfortunately uh, pushing his bike to the side of the track offline. Looks like that'll be the last we'll see of the Race Art Designs Kawasaki Connection Pro Works Team Kawasaki ZX6R, at least in this one. Passfield now starting to put pressure on our leader, Aidan Hayes. Well, here, here comes, comes Passfield. He's good at slipstreaming, and he does it again. He did it on Redmond a couple of laps ago. He does it on Hayes this time. Hayes tries to do what Redmond tried to do, and more successfully. Out breaks his counters tight, the challenge. Tight, tight, tight. Ah, oh, nice and move. Does it well. Well done, well done through bikebiz.com.au. Yeah, he, he did well through there, Lance. Kept a good tight line. I thought he might have been in just a little bit too deep, but uh, he proved me wrong, which is uh, not a, not uh, not too hard to do. But uh, managed to take the lead back. So that was a good move from uh, young Aiden Hayes. Still and all, there's only less than a bike length between the two of them as they head through Dunlop for the run up over the top of the hill towards Matrice Dampers. The hard 90 degree left hander that starts the long run around uh, Shock Treatment Hill down into race tech turn number nine yes down into races dot world now what i would think 
Hayes would be trying to do, and it's easier said than done as Passfield tries down the inside at races. Doc Will, he would like to be probably another four or five light links in front lengths, I would think, coming down the high tech oil straight, but I don't think he's going to be able to do that. All he's got to do is concentrate on head down, bum up, make sure that he doesn't look back, gets maximum traction out and drive out of shark levers for the run down the high tech oil's main straight and maintain that first position. Although having said that, Jack Passfield is simply superb in slipstreaming. He just gets the draft that he needs. Then he pulls out at the right moment. Right on cue he as he goes across the strike line and gets the run through turn one again. Certainly does. Redden Needs to keep it tight. Oh, down the inside again is uh, Hayes, but is he close enough, Lance? He's got the inside line. Oh, Can he do it again? Oh, yes, he does. Actually blocked passes he him a little bit there. <laughs> yeah. Sat it upright almost on purpose halfway through that one. Now through turn two, and that balked Passfield momentarily. He did now down through the bike haggle.com.au. He's got to try and get away from Passfield. Easier said than done, I think, as they come down through Dunlop. Passfield looks down for an inside pass. Can he get it done there? Not quite. Not quite coming up to Matrice Dampers. Our race leader Hayes knows that uh, if Passfield is that close to him, uh, he will be able to outdraft him down the straight. But uh, he's trying desperately to try and break away from Passfield if he can down through races.world. In the background, you can see the battle for third and fourth between Redman and Barker as they and just coming into sight now, Redmond just holding off the challenges of Barker. Likewise, Hayes just holding on to the off the challenges of Passfield. Out of turn nine and down the races.com back straight into turns 10, 11 and 12. Is he close enough, Lance? Oh, he's gone wide. Onto he's... the ripple strip. Yep. Now, let's see what happens. Out of Shark Leathers, Passfield on the outside. Can you get the draft, Lance? Looking to see, he comes to the inside comes. now. He's left his best to last. I think Hayes has held on. He has indeed by 0 0.03 of a second. Wow, quite literally, only a hair between the two of them. Passfield in second, Redmond third, Barker, Masri and Sullen finishing in fourth, fifth and sixth respectively. A great effort there for Hayes just to hold on to the victory ahead of Passfield. It uh, does what I suggested it would do there and that means that, oh no it doesn't, Passfield's still 10 points behind. Here's the official results for the Amsport 600 and Supersport. Matrice Dampers, Supersport 600 riders. Aiden Hayes ahead of Jack Passfield and Stephanie Redmond. P4 to Callum Barker. Ryan Masri, Ryan Sellen, Noel Mahone, Matt Franco, Brody Maloof and Brian Bolster round up your front page. Yeah, no, it's been really good this weekend. It's been some good battles with Aiden all weekend as well, so it's been a really fun weekend. Um, the Pirelli tyres are working sweet. Um, and I'd like to say a big thank you to Stay Upright for teaching me how to go around this track really well. With Callum Barker sitting in an almost unbeatable position, all the Queenslander needed to do was just finish the final race of the season to take out the title. From the get-go, it was once again Hayes and Passfield who resumed hostilities for the race lead, and the pair were trading blows during the early stages before Passfield finally worked his way past Hayes at bikebiz.com.au on lap two. Behind them, Barker and Redmond continued their battle for third place whilst keeping in touch with the dueling pair of Hayes and Passfield ahead of them. As the race wore on, Passfield would break away into a comfortable race lead and head off to win the final race of the season and the first AM Sport bike home, with Hayes finishing in second and the first Super Sport bike home. With a third place finish, Callum Barker claimed the 2018 championship, capping off a tremendous season. After the crash yesterday, got on my bike and uh... Yeah, it's, it's going good. P beat uh, this morning in uh, race one, so um, you know maybe I should just throw it down the road a little bit more often. So uh, yeah, no, it's going good for it. Like I said before, standard showroom bike with a air filter, a tune, and a, and a full system. But um, you know after after yesterday's crash, I'm left with basically no bits. Don't even have a dash on the bike, so it's amazing the bike's even running. So uh, yeah. At, this morning I walked into the pit shed and Dad had got a piece of paper and a Nikko pen and it's, it's got the taco with the needle at 15,000 which is red line and down the bottom it says temperature's good. So who knows what the what the bike's doing but it's made it in one piece and uh, yeah I'm glad that I could wrap up the championship. Took to the last round, Steph pushed me down to the wire but uh, 
you know, hats off to everyone this weekend, especially um, Steph and Aiden. They just set the pace for everybody, including myself, so it was a good weekend. Congratulations go out to both Brendan McIntyre and Callum Barker, our respective champions in the bikehaggle.com.au Superbikes and the Matrice Stampers Supersports, making it a clean sweep for the Suzuki brand. But our coverage of this final round is not done just yet. We still have all the action from all of our major support categories the next time you join us here at Sydney Motorsport Park. See you then.